the Arizona Department of Transportation recently uploaded some interesting photos, asking people online what they think it could be. The image shows what appears to be a high-tech aircraft, although no further information was provided. They said that the photographs were taken off the I-10 at Citrus, and it didn't take long for people to share their opinions on what it might be. One user said that her husband thinks it might be a new type of drone, but did say that he couldn't explain what the thing in the middle is. Other users said that it might be a Eurofighter or an F-18, but like others they couldn't explain what the strange part in the middle was. Although some suggested that this was something mysterious like a downed aircraft that had been retrieved, most agreed that it was something like a drone, noting that a similar photograph made the rounds on social media back in 2011, when a truck could be seen carrying a strange object in the shape of a disc. The internet lit up with theories about what this object could have been, ranging from reverse engineered crafts to something that crash landed. It turned out though that the object had been rammed, and that it was a drone that would be used and tested on aircraft carriers. It was called the X-47B, and according to the US Navy's official website, it was a tailless strike fighter-sized unmanned aircraft developed as part of the US Navy's unmanned combat air system. For decades, researchers into the unknown have been marked, with the mainstream media and even government officials often debunking any claims of mysterious aircrafts. The irony of all this being that they're the ones who have investigated and spent the most amount of money investigating them. As of lately, many officials have gone on record as talking openly about this topic, something that many researchers thought would never happen. This change in stance has caused some to question whether they might be releasing some more information in regards to the subject. An amateur researcher by the name of Anthony Brogalia requested a freedom of information letter in regards to these objects. Anthony penned an open letter to the Defense Intelligence Agency requesting details on exotic materials. This included debris, sightings and crashes. He said the following. This could include physical debris recovered by personnel of the Department of Defense as residue, flotsam, shot off material or crash material from unidentified objects. In the response to this request, the Defense Intelligence Agency shared over 150 pages of information, which included reports on a mysterious memory metal called nitinol, which remembers its original shape when folded. Interestingly, those who have researched famous cases throughout history said that those who were cleaning up the crash signs reported picking up thin pieces of material that when crushed would return to its original shape. Anthony said that this document is incredible, and that it proves that the US has retrieved advanced materials from crashes that have extraordinary capabilities. He said the following, Officials have admitted to holding and testing mysterious debris from these objects. They've been able to learn some things about the materials of construction which hold tremendous promise, as futuristic materials which will change our lives forever. Interestingly, he said that the first Freedom of Information Act request was submitted back in 2017, and said that it took over three years for them to reply. He went on to say the following, the article mentioned that anomalous debris from these objects was being analysed by a private defence contractor. Material evidence has been the focus of my research. My Freedom of Information Act request was very specific, seeking the test results of this debris, not material already known to science. Anthony, like many other researchers, believe that HARP officials have collected debris from crash sites and those who have looked into the subject have said there's been a handful of crashes over the past few decades. Those who have looked into this have said that these crashes don't happen often, but when they do, one of the first to arrive on the scene is that of government officials. Anthony is interested in the nitinol that was described in the document. He said the following, The inclusion of advanced technical reports on nitinol is curious. 
Nitinol is a shaped memory alloy that remembers its original shape when folded, and snaps back seamlessly and instantly. This memory metal characteristic was reported by many witnesses at Roswell. Many researchers have said it's been a long road, but now they feel like they're starting to get answers. One user said the following, If you want to know about this stuff, you go to the people who are high up. They're the ones who have been investigating these things for over 70 years now, and I can imagine they have a lot of information on these things that's never been released. We already know quite a lot about certain programs that they run. Imagine the stuff we don't know about. What other documents and physical evidence do they have? I feel like it's been slow, but I feel like we're now moving in the right direction. We've already had ex-officials come forward with their testimonies. So I think at this point people are well aware that something is going on. For me though, there's still many unanswered questions. Where are these things coming from? How can they go the speeds they do? How do they change shape? How do they outmaneuver our planes? How do they not make a sound while they're in the sky? Hopefully soon we'll get the answers that we've been patiently waiting for. End quote. A recent investigation by the UN panel of experts on Libya discovered that a Turkish-made drone would actively look out for humans and hunt them down. The report stated that the drone would target the opposition and attack, even when they retreated or surrendered. The drones were fitted with devices that would explode upon impact, with officials saying that the drone would fly into soldiers and detonate. The artificial intelligence is said to be able to manage up to 20 drones at once, but rather worryingly it was said that these drones, or rather the artificial intelligence, seemed to have a mind of its own. The UN reported that forces were ruthlessly hunted down by these drones. One part of the report said the following. The lethal autonomous weapon systems were programmed to attack targets, without requiring data connectivity between operator and the munition. In effect, a true fire forget and find capability. Officials have reported that as of right now there's been no casualties caused by these drones, and said that is it likely that they would tell us the truth if they had taken out humans, saying that it could cause some to panic and protest. Soldiers in the field, along with individuals who study the battleground, have said this is the first time that a drone has automatically turned and attacked humans. Although other drones have been deployed to the battlefield, and that perhaps their actions were concealed, this is the first time that officials have openly observed these drones actively hunting humans. The next worry for those studying the event reported that the drones can't always interpret visual data correctly, meaning that sometimes it can mess up its targets, which in turn means that instead of hitting the enemy, they could easily turn on harmless civilians. Jack Walting at the UK Defence Royal United Service Institute said that these drones and the artificial intelligence behind them are not subject to international laws. This has been a concern for many researchers, as they've said that some artificial intelligence projects are unregulated, which is worrying especially when you learn that sometimes they're not always right in their execution. Jack said the following, this does not show that autonomous weapons would be impossible to regulate, but it does show that the discussion continues to be urgent and important. The technology isn't going to wait for us. As of right now, researchers are pushing for more laws to be created around artificial intelligence. People who have studied AI have said that breakthrough technologies are inevitable, and that artificial intelligence is going to be a big part of our lives. It already is, but researchers have said that humans are going to rely on AI much more in the future. Projections have shown us that by the year 2040, the median value for the advent of artificial general intelligence will be accomplished by processing power, which is the ability for a computer to be able to perform all the functions of a human being, while being able to explore free thought. This could then mean that the technological singularity would shortly begin thereafter, 
with incredibly intelligent machines making even more intelligent machines and so on. This means we could see a super advanced intelligence within our lifetime. Various individuals have been vocal about AI and how we need to tread carefully over the next few years. Some have found it interesting that Elon has gone down this path. After all, he's been very vocal about the dangers of AI and even suggested that in time artificial intelligence could take over. He warned people about superintelligence, a form of artificial intelligence that's way smarter than us humans. He stated that this AI could create an immortal dictator. His worry is that the development of superintelligence could end up in the form of an AI that governs the whole world. Elon said the following, There are many outcomes, but one of the least scary ones is if we had a company or a small group of people that manages this superintelligence. This group of technology could take over the world. At least when there's an evil dictator that human goes on to die, but for an AI there would be no death, it would live forever, and then you'd have an immortal dictator from which we could never escape. This sounds worrying and rightly so. Elon isn't trying to scare people, but he's trying to make them understand what implications artificial intelligence could have on the world. Currently we use AI for everything, and he says it won't be long until it's controlling us completely. Early AI work has allowed us to be where we are today, and it seems that we're not slowing down. Elon has also stated he thinks the human race will be overtaken by AI by 2030 or 2040. This means we have less than 10 years before this could happen. Another study has shown us that machines could outperform humans in all tasks within 45 years. Recent studies have shown us that humans and robots aren't ready to coexist. Many people had mixed feelings about the hitchhiking robot. The robot was created in Canada and was released into the world to meet humans. It's reported that the robot was found while it was traveling across Canada and Europe, but when it reached America it only lasted two weeks. The robot had its head ripped off, along with its arms and legs. This project was said to be more of a social experiment, to see how humans behave around something different. Although the robot did well in some regions, it wasn't as well received in others. Ultimately, researchers have said we should focus on one question, and that's what can we learn from this. It also gave us an insight into how humans and robots could potentially coexist. The robot would move around because of kindness of everyday people, and because of kind people it was able to travel over 6,200 miles. The robot's last message was the following. My trip must come to an end for now, but my love for humans will never fade. Thanks, friends. So what do you make of the drones that are actively hunting humans? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.